Hello! Good afternoon. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I'd make it on today, but um, I really felt like there's um, perhaps some mindsets that still need to be adjusted as we go into 2020 and the rest of this decade. Um, you probably heard everybody already talking about how crucial this year is and um, there's going to be so many things that are built upon the foundation that we lay in this year personally um, generationally like with our with our family um, for the kingdom definitely for our businesses all of these things are going to grow upon the foundation that we lay this year and one of the most important um, things that we need to reconcile is what has happened to us in the past and where we are now and how all of that works together to build us into our future and to help us get into the perfect will uh, for our destinies and so um, this this word um, came to me a few days ago I just really wasn't sure um, uh, that that this was something that I should release yet and um, I really felt the confirmation this morning when I was in prayer just that there's still um, there's still a significant amount of people who need to uh, come to uh, the place where they are um, where they are at peace with their past and they know how to use this for their future so um, we all know the story about Lazarus. He was dead and he was buried in the grave for four days. And we know that Jesus loved Lazarus. You know, we know this story. And so the way that um, this story was spoken to me this time, though, really wasn't about Lazarus. It was during this story. So if you look up um, John chapter 11, you can read this story in its full detail. But really what I want to focus on is verse 31. So what is happening is Jesus is traveling to the area where Lazarus is buried and his sisters, Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, are at home and they're weeping. Martha goes out to meet Jesus when he's still far away, but Mary is still in the house weeping. And verse 31 says that she was weeping and suddenly she got up and left the, um, left the house and she ran outside because Martha had come to her and whispered to her the teacher uh, the teacher is asking for you come outside and so she, when she gets up the people who are in the room with her the Bible is very specific and it says they supposed she had gone out to mourn at Lazarus's grave and so they came with her and this is really what I want to build upon this word with today is that in the middle of Mary's grief she was still obedient to heed the voice of Jesus and it was her her heartache and her grief actually provided moments for the, the exact moment for all of these people who were around her to comfort her in her time of grieving in her crisis time and she used that moment to still listen to the voice of Jesus she left where she was and she went out to meet Jesus and because of that all of those people who were there to comfort her followed her and thereby they not only saw the miracle, the, the word says that they came to believe in Jesus because of this. And so there are, um, the way that we need to look at things that have gone through our past are, are very important. How we, how we end up marrying the things that have gone on in our past and our circumstances that have caused deep pain to us, there's redemption in all of that. And of course, we know the story about Lazarus. He, you know, Jesus calls him forth and he comes back from the dead. But really, think about the, the crucial role that Mary played in this situation. She was in the middle of her pain. She knew that she said, her and Martha both told Jesus, if you had come when I called for you, he wouldn't have even died. And so there was a lot of things going on in their own, in those minds. Uh, we know that Jesus loved these two. He loved Mary and Martha. He loved Lazarus. And he didn't come when they called him. So maybe you are dealing with this situation where you feel like if, if my prayers had been answered right away, I wouldn't have be in this position. I wouldn't be in this situation. I would have been much better off. I would have been further along, whatever. But recognize that there's a larger um, play, you know, there's a larger plan that's in play and you are a vital role of that. The way that you look 
at life and the way that you are still able and willing to respond to the voice of Jesus can lead other people can lead other people to Jesus. So it was because of her her heartache and grief and that time of her mourning that she was still able to listen and um, follow the voice of Jesus. She left the room and all of these people ended up coming with her. Her reaction in that moment was not what people had expected. As I said, the word says that they expected her that she was leaving the room to go outside to the grave to weep and mourn. And she did not do what they expected her to do, especially when all of this pressure was on her. Her deep loss was finally settling in. You know, in Hebrew um, tradition and culture, they believed that, that the soul of the person who had died stuck around the body for four days after they had passed. And so this was really, this was the fourth day, and she was really coming to terms with the fact that her brother was dead. And instead of reacting um, uh, how somebody how they they thought she should have reacted because she still ran to Jesus because she still went to the one who she could have just blamed you know like he died because you weren't here and she could have not come to Jesus and she could have not um, still stayed soft and tender towards his words and to his um, intentions and his love towards her but because she did not do the normal thing and because she still ran to Jesus she still came to him it says that she fell at his feet and um, and said Lord you know if you were here you could have healed him and she was still wanting to engage in that deep relationship with Jesus and because of that her grief and her pain brought in so many souls into the kingdom and so I just wonder how we could each um, take a look at our situations the deepest um, darkest uh, pain, most painful times and ask the Lord how can you redeem this how can I partner with that situation so that this can be used for your glory God you know the whole time Jesus was saying this has happened for the glory of God this has happened the reason that he's sick the reason that he will eventually die is so that the glory of God may be manifest and uh, this this was such a significant miracle that later on when the Pharisees and all of the uh, rulers at the time, the synagogue leaders were around, they were plotting to kill Jesus. They also planned to kill Lazarus. That's how um, impactful this situation was. That's how impactful this story was on the culture at that time. And it was because there were so many witnesses that were able to see Lazarus come out of his grave when Jesus called. And it was because they were there for Mary and Martha. If Mary had not responded, to Jesus's prompting to come to him. Think about all of the people who wouldn't have been there to witness that miracle and who wouldn't have become witnesses. And the same is true in our lives. When people see us going through difficult times, when people see us going through um, certain situations that should normally harden our hearts, but when we have the opposite reaction, when we do the opposite thing that people are expecting us to do, that is when there can be a huge shift and it, pro it, it, it gives the space you know, it creates a, a specific area where, where kingdom can come and invade and not only do a miracle in our lives, you know, Mary and Martha ended up getting what they were wanting, but also winning souls for kingdom. You know, it was a special, um, special moment in time. It was a very significant moment that all of these people were gathered together. This whole entire situation was uh, orchestrated was orchestrated for the glory of God and and, it, and he was just waiting for all of these people to be around to witness um, his goodness, his greatness, the fact that he his love knows no bounds and um, and this was because he had specific people whom he loved that were willing to partner with him. You know again Mary and Martha were very significant in this story and um, I just pray that as we are only five days into 2020 we have 360 more days left in the year that we would all take a look at our hardest situations our most difficult times and ask for clarity on how we can react and partner with these things in a way that is going to um, create that same type of space you know Lord I want to have that type of space in my life where it creates this Kairos moment that not only I get my miracle not only am I blessed but your glory is so um, profoundly displayed 
that people cannot help but come to you. Your your power is so um, is so brilliantly displayed that there is no denying that you are the one that you are the true God. And so I pray that for all of us. I pray that for each of you who are watching this, whether you're on Facebook right now or you're on Instagram or uh, YouTube, and you'll watch it later. However you see this video, I just pray that you would um, find, find it in your heart to come to a way where you can take a look at the past and see how this is working for your future. You know, take a look at that because there's that space, you know, that we're in right now called the present where our past is over here and our future is over here and we're in this middle ground. And if we're not, um, if we haven't already settled some of these things in our past, we're not going to be able to move forward in our future to the fullest because this Kairos moment, we all have these moments in our lives, these Kairos moments. Every single person was meant to have these moments in their in their lives. And if we don't have them, if we don't have this place where our, our past is redeemed um, and we are able to, to use that momentum moving forward to expand the kingdom, we're missing out on the purpose for our lives. We continue to you know, come into these same circumstances and situations again and again because it's ultimately trying to create, the, our outside circumstances are trying to create this space for the glory of God to come and invade. And so I just pray that, you know, as we're into 2020 already, that our mindsets would really shift and come into alignment with this and recognize that everything that you have gone through, it serves a purpose. And I pray that you would do what people do not expect, that you would have the opposite reaction, that your heart would continue to be soft and tender towards the words of Jesus to, the, to his voice, and that you would find yourself doing the opposite thing that people want you to do so that you create that Kairos uh, space in your in your life for so many people to come to know to know Jesus and to um, be brought into the kingdom forever. So I hope this word really ministers to um, to you and that it it strikes a chord with you. As I said, I got this word a few days ago. Um, you know, and I'm ready to talk about something else. <laughs> I'm ready to talk about. Uh, just like the new things and the new season and stuff like that. And I was not really sure um, why I was getting this word, but um, today I just really felt like this was uh, uh, something that God really wants to kind of wrap up and and um, bring everybody into agreement on so that we can move forward, um, you know, as a body. And also um, so that there is real healing brought to individuals who feel like they have been kind of overlooked, like their Kairos moment never came, um, like that they were crying out and waiting for their prayers to be answered, but they never were. You know, Mary and Martha both said that. Both times they met Jesus separately. You know, Martha went out first and she said, if you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. And Mary, when she got to Jesus, she said the same thing. She said, if you were been here you know, this wouldn't have happened. And sometimes we can feel that way. God, if you had answered my prayer when I prayed it, then I wouldn't be in this situation. If you'd done something sooner, you know, this wouldn't have happened. And again, it's because Mary reacted in a way that the people didn't expect that they followed her, that they came to her and were, happened to be at the right time at the right place. This entire situation was orchestrated. And so is your life. Your life has been every single detail, um, perfectly oriented so that these kinds of moments can come so that God can come and display his power and that you can have your miracle and so that many souls can be brought into the kingdom through through the miracle that you need in your life it's through our weaknesses you know that his per perfect power is demonstrated and so I just pray that um that this word is the thing it's like the last piece of the puzzle that you need to finally come and and make peace with your past. Maybe the unanswered prayers that you haven't gotten in 2019 or even in the past decade, you know, or maybe your whole life you've been waiting for something and it hasn't come to be yet. But I pray that you would find peace right now with that and you would know that you have a good father who is looking out for you, who is watching, who is watching every detail of your life and waiting for your response to match heavens. And so that these kinds of Kairos moments can come and invade you know, 2020, as I said, is such an important year. And uh, uh, what you do this year is, is you've got to be intentional with every single thing. I saw that that 
that the intentionality behind whatever it is you're doing, whether it's speaking or doing something or being, you know, just being, um, your intentionality is so important. It's a whole other video that I'll have to do a different day. Um, but it is so important and that this year, specifically 2020, what you get right during this year is going to give you momentum for the rest of the decade. And what you don't get right, you're going to pay for for the rest of the decade. So get it right. You know, just come into agreement. Do whatever you need to do. If it's a fast, if it's a retreat, if it's getting together to pray with uh, a group of friends around you, whatever it is that you need to do to, um, to make the past, you know, settle it and recognize like, okay, I didn't get my miracle when I prayed for it, but that doesn't mean I'm not getting my miracle. You know, and I'm, I'm going to lead other people to Jesus in the process. Once you can come into agreement and get the soil of your heart cleaned out so that it's a soft ground, good ground for the, for the word of God to grow, you're going to be ready. You're going to be ready to um, host this Kairos moment. And that's ultimately what the Lord is preparing you for. So please take this word to heart, literally <laughs> to your heart and let it, um, take out the rocky places and the thorny places uh, in inside of you so that um, we can all move forward. You know, we need one another. Um, the body needs each other. And to make a difference in this world, we, we all have to be on the same page. We can't have just one spot that's sick or weak. We all have to be working together in unison, all strong and healthy. And so uh, please do what you need to do, what your part is in this role, please do that so that you can move forward and uh, we can all build upon that in the coming decades. So again, blessings to each of you. And I pray again, this word ministers to your, to the soil of your heart. And I will see you in a live video probably tomorrow. <laughs>